My name is Wilfred Nagal, and I'm from Waterloo, Ontario, in Canada. My company is Century Scientific, and we are building a smart walker for the elderly. What it is, is a traditional walker, but with smart electronics on it. My parents are actually from Vietnam. Um, they fled the uh, Vietnam War, and I flew to Canada, and then they got married and had kids, and that's where, you know, we were born. When I was little, I loved fixing electronics. Um, I mean, there was a broken calculator. Um, it was solar powered, but the solar power panel was broken. And so I, I took it apart. I hooked it up to a nine volt battery and hey, it, it runs. I believe that was the starting point to where I really took interest in electronics and I love it ever since. I have a strong interest in medical devices and I guess that's where uh, the idea came from. I saw the ability to help seniors uh, reduce fall-related injuries, um, alleviate healthcare expenses. We saw this opportunity to turn the status quo walkers into smart walkers. Traditional walkers lack the additional safety features that prevent walkers from running away. This smart walker here would automatically apply gradual brakes. It has an array of sensors, from pressure sensors, encoders to detect the speed, accelerometers to detect whether it's going down a hill or not. Through the array of sensors and some programming, it's capable of perceiving the user intention and reacting appropriately to reduce the risk of injuries. We came to Hardware Battlefield because we wanted to gain um, exposure, uh, as well as um, network with all the VCs and angels that could be there listening. Uh, due to the uh, uniqueness of our uh, product, it's something that you don't see every day. Eventually, everybody might need a walk one day, right? Our project is investing in our future. Welcome back, and I'd like to welcome Wilford from Century Scientific on stage with a product that I'm going to need by the end of the week. <laughs> Thank you. My name is Wilfred, and I am the CEO of Century Scientific. How many of you know somebody who uses a walker? Great, because I know somebody too. Oh, can we get uh, okay. my slides up, please? On my keyboard. There we go. Uh, there we go. Here we go. Wonderful, let's yes. go. So this is Mary, she's 76 years old and she uses a walker for mobility. Although she's using a walker, she also noticed a few challenges that seniors face today. Number one, she's often forgetful. And even though her physiotherapists tell her constantly to always engage the brakes before sitting on the walker, she sometimes forget. And when that happens, she has a fall injury. Number two, some cities are not very age friendly. Take, for example, this very steep ramp coming down from a grocery store. What about the west side in San Francisco? These steep hills and ramps can cause instability when seniors try to descend it, and thus lead to a walk-related fall injury. And so these steep ramps and forgetfulness is what causes walk-related fall injuries. It can cost an average of $17,500 to diagnose and treat, and it can cost even upwards of $50,000, depending on whether you have a hip fracture or a head injury. When a senior falls and injures themselves, they are less likely to recover and could be bedridden for the rest of their life. And when they do recover, the fear of falling again is seared into the back of their mind. And then this would then deteriorate their psychological and physical health. They would opt for the wheelchair, leading to a lower quality of life. And so these are problems that seniors face today. But today, we have a solution. Introducing the world's first smart walker, capable of perceiving user intention, the environment around us, and actuating appropriately to minimize the risk of injuries. It features a variety of sensors from pressure sensors. So when a senior sits on the walker, automatic brakes kicks in and prevents a fall from happening. It has accelerometers and encoders so that when a senior takes it down a ramp, we apply gradual brakes, slowing them down, giving them that immediate support and stability, and allowing them to descend safely. These features safeguard seniors from falls, leading them to a higher quality of life. 
Now for some product demonstration. Can we have Marco up? Marco, let me just turn this on. He's going to pretend he's 76 years old. He's going to, he forgets to lock the brakes, so he'll sit on the walker. And the brakes automatically engage. When he wants to move around, he just touches the yellow button, and he can reposition himself in front of the desk. When he stands up, all he has to do is press the yellow button to uh, unleash the brakes, and he's ready to go. Thank you, Marco. This is a traditional walker. If you take it down a ramp, physiotherapist has this thing called walk running away. Oops, now I have to twiddle my thumb what I'm gonna do. Oops. Now with our smart walker, we apply gradual brakes so that will never happen. And when you're ready, you just stroll on. You'll feel that resistance, giving you that stability. The senior population is gonna explode over the next couple of years. The baby booming population is reaching their senior years. And so we can expect healthcare costs to rise as well. This is why this is technology is needed now, today. If we look at the disabled and assistive device market, it's grown from $12 billion in 2012 to, 2000, to $19 billion in 2019. And our go-to-market strategy is to take this technology, license it to walker manufacturers. They integrate it into their walkers as they leave the factory. Before I, let you, before I close, I'd like to show you a video of what one of our users have to say. Mm -hmm. This would be good because you could, uh, it would stop you a bit and then you could get organized again mm -hmm. because sometimes it goes faster than your feet. Hey, My good. son usually, if he's with me, he always holds on to me. He says, watch because this is a steep hill. Mm -hmm. And uh, I like the safety feature going down the hill. And um, I think it should be on everybody's walker. If you know somebody who would benefit from this technology, please support them by signing up for a mailing list on our website where they can find out when to get this walker when it becomes available. We are Century Scientific, and we are building a safer future, one step at a time. Very good. Nicely done. Rob, do you ever have any oops? Well, I was just going to say thanks for walking us through that. <laughs> oh, um, you're a funny one. <laughs> but in all seriousness, um, I, 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 I want to say um, when I think about hardware companies and the companies that I find very interesting where you're pioneering a sec, you know, an area where there hasn't been a lot of innovation, at least from my perspective, you're reinventing a truly unloved product for a lot of people. Mm -hmm. uh, the question that I have is, have people come in and started to think about how to apply intelligence to a device like this it's probably traditionally been a very low bill of materials product are there people that are running around in this category or is there a lot of open field running available for creating intellectual property here many of the universities like MIT University of Waterloo they are doing a lot of research in the aging population because we all understand aging there's gonna be a lot of seniors soon right and many of them are walking on smart walker technologies some of them have collision avoidance uh, we, we tried that out for a little bit for our first prototype and didn't work out too well. And then so we eliminated all those extra features to just only have the core features. So yes, to answer your questions, there's a lot of university studies that are working on developing assistive technologies for seniors. Anything commercially available or? Uh, at this point, there's only two other um, similar products that is beginning to uh, stroll out. Thanks. Craig, anything? So just thinking about the existing market, how difficult has this project been to, to accomplish what you've done, which is, which is great? Is it patented? Did it take you many years to develop this technology? We, so we have thought of provisional, but to get us all the way there, we went through, it took us a, about a year to get um, from where we were. It began as a capstone project at the University of Waterloo. And then afterwards, we took it to the next level. We entered competition, pitched this. Um, the greatest hurdle that uh, we came across was trying to get this to market ourselves. We needed substantial capital, and plus all the regulatory requirements, uh, compliance, QMS, um, FDA, 
um, that was huge barriers for us to handle on our own, which is why we want to license this technology to Walker manufacturers. How many Walker manufacturers are out there? There's a lot of Walker manufacturers out there, but the we're engaged in early stage conversations with several of them. And are there several dominant players in the space? Yes. Okay. So Envicare is very dominant. I use a global, um, global uh, medical device uh, company. We have Drive Medical. Um, they do a lot of innovations for uh, walkers and wheelchairs. And then we also have Human Care, a Sweden-based company, who's also doing a lot of work in the space. Joey, do you know anybody that would use this? Oh yeah, lots. Um, so my capstone project was actually some, something similar in the area of people with disabilities. And one of the areas of concerns that we had was cost. So do you think that senior citizens, especially those disabled, are gonna be able to afford the premium for something like this over a traditional walker? Yes, with many of the subsidy programs out there, like Medicaid, it is potential they could afford this with the help of uh, those programs. In Canada, we have a similar program called ADP, mm -hmm. which would subsidize up to 75% of costs. Medicaid, 80%. So yes, it could be become affordable, but yes, at the same time, it is very expensive. Do you, do you have a sense of what uh, the effic efficacy is of this walker versus a, an ordinary walker in terms of preventing falls? Have, have you thought about whether there might be an ROI advantage to uh, somebody using this walker and avoiding insurance claims? Mm. Sorry, I, I'm not sure if I completely understand the question. Can you rephrase? So if a senior uses this walker versus a, a dumb walker, uh, one that just moves along, mm -hmm. have you started to take a look at how many falls you might be able to prevent for the typical senior uh, using this versus uh, an ordinary walker? Um, unfortunately, we can't do a formal study to uh, see how much uh, you know this would benefit financially mm -hmm. uh, for our seniors uh, when they have to pay insurance and everything. Mm -hmm. uh, no, I, I haven't. But uh, we have spoken to occupational therapists and, and seniors themselves, and they strongly feel that this technology can reduce health care costs. Wilford, what's going on down here? I've been watching this little actuator move this entire presentation. I was paying attention, mm -hmm. but I was, I was watching down here. Can you explain the mechanism? Yes. So basically, um, the mechanism down there is it's a bicycle brake, and it's hooked up to an actuator, a servo. And so what happens is there's a pressure sensor underneath the seat. When a person sits on it, pass, uh, their weight passes a certain threshold, and then that would then fire a control signal from the microprocessor to tell the servo to actuate. Hmm. And then that would engage the brakes. So what's the battery life on this? This is two weeks. Fully charged two weeks. And if you don't charge it, does it not move? Um, if we charge it, then the, safe, the safety mechanism, it won't work, Great. essentially. And then they would have to resort to using um, what is now a dumb walker. The, uh, Did we just coin a term, a dumb, dumb walker? <laughs> I think so. Any other questions, judges? Thank you very much, Wilford. Beautiful product. Thank you.